I want you to go with the scripture with me to Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew, uh, the 21st chapter, as Reverend Damon told you, uh, and the 12th through 13th verses. Yes, Lord. Again, that's Matthew 21, verses 12 through 13. And the word of God reads, And Jesus went into the temple of God and cast out all them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers yes. and the seats of them that sold doves yes. and said unto them, It is written, My house shall be called the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. Yes. I want to use for a topic, when Christ gets angry with the church. And I want to use for a subtopic, the indignation of Christ. When Christ gets angry with the church, the indignation of Christ. And now, Lord, may the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, be acceptable in thine sight, O Lord, my strength and redeemer, and all God's people said amen, amen. <clears throat> for the Father, amen, amen for the Son, and amen for amen. the Holy Spirit. Thank God for my wife uh, and my children, and my grandson, for my whole family, amen. and to the entire Dalton family, yes. and to all of you who are uh, by way of Facebook Live and by way of YouTube. Thank God for you. Amen. <clears throat> Church. As human beings, we often feel certain types of emotions. Yes, we do. We feel happiness and or joy. We, yeah. we feel love, yeah. sadness. We even have feelings of trust and fear. Yes. We have feelings of remorse and often and at some times we have feelings of anger. Yes, yes, yes we do. Today I want to talk about anger for a little while. Right. Anger can be a good thing, but at the same time, it can be a thing that gets us in trouble. Yes. And I'm sure all of us can say that we have been angry before, and we also can say that we have expressed our anger in different ways. Mm -hmm. We express our anger sometimes through what we call rage. Yes. And sometimes we express it through indignation. Yeah. And while there are many other angers I could talk about, I want to keep the subject stuck on two places, and that is rage and indignation. Mm -hmm. Whenever we mention rage, it normally shows itself to be negative. Mm -hmm. However, when we talk about indignation, it shows itself to be a kind of righteous anger. When we deal with anger in a negative way, it can often be destructive. Yeah. Rage seeks to destroy people. Yeah. It seeks to do wrong to people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Rage seeks vengeance. Yes. It is guided by selfishness. Yeah. And rage is forbidden by God. Mm -hmm. yes. Indignation anger seeks to correct it also seeks to destroy evil. Yeah. Indignation seeks for justice, and it's guided by the mercy of God, and it is required by God. Amen. There is nothing wrong with being angry at times as long as our anger is handled in a proper manner. Amen. Even the scriptures tell us in Ephesians the chapter 4, verses 26 through 27, it says that, and I quote, Be ye angry and not sin, and sin not. Yes. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath, Amen. neither give place to evil, unquote. Yes. Here in the text, we see Jesus is angry. Yes. Yeah. Normally when we discuss Jesus, we discuss the love of Christ. Yes, yes. However, in this passage, I want to discuss his love through the anger that he expressed in his indignation. Mm -hmm. 
The text tells us, the text reads in Matthew 21, 12 and 13, it says, And Jesus went into the temple of God and cast out all them that sold and bought, <coughs> excuse me, in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves. And said unto them, it is written, my house shall be called the house of prayer, but ye have made it into a den, a den of thieves. You have made it a den of thieves. Right. Jesus properly expressed his anger here to remove the people who were breaking God's law by making a profit from the sacrificial animals and offerings. The leaders were corrupt. Yeah. The leaders that were selling these animals, their motive and focus was in the wrong place. It was going in the wrong direction. Yes. The focus should have been on the worship of the Lord. Yeah. However, the focus was on making money. The focus was on cheating the people of God out of their money for these offerings that were supposed to be sacrificed to God. Church, I believe one of the reasons some people don't accept God or Christ in their churches anymore is because they are cheating the people. And, and you can try to keep the Christ out of the church, but one day he's going to show up and turn over some things in the church. Every now and then, the Christ that I serve has to come in the church and turn over some tables. He has to come in and turn some things up. Every now and then he has to come in the church and beat some stuff out of the church that shouldn't be in the house of the Lord in the first place. Amen. Sometimes the Lord has to come in the church and even shake up the money in the church. Amen. You wonder why sometimes money is acting funny in church? Every now and then God has to come by and shake it up in the church so that people know to do what's right, what's in the house of God and not what's wrong in the house of God. Of God, our, our, our focus in the church should be on doing what's right and not on doing what is wrong. In the house of God, our focus should be on prayer and not on doing people wrong. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Some so often people come to church for everything but worship. But when we come to church in the Lord's house, in the house of prayer, it should be to worship our Lord. I, I don't know, but you, you should be having church right there where you are. And, and if anything else is on your mind, I, I want you to clear it out your mind and put worship on your mind. Yes. Put praise on your mind. Put Jesus on your mind. We can even look even at this pandemic season that we're in and, and, and maybe God is trying to tell us something. Maybe while we're out of the house, maybe God is trying to tell us that we should regroup ourselves. While, while we're out of the house in this pandemic season, maybe God is trying to tell us that when we come back to church, come to church for a good reason. Come to church for a worship reason. Come to church for a prayer reason when we come back to church. Maybe God is trying to show us something. Maybe God is trying to check our motives to see what we were in the church in the first place because see if you're in the church for worship even right now you'll find a time to worship but if you were in the church just to be in the church you're not worshiping no more you're not praising no more you're not trying to get a word from the Lord but if you were in the church for worship even right now where you are you're finding a time to worship our Lord Jesus told the people it is, written, it is written, my house shall be called the house of prayer, but you have made it a den of these. Church, while it takes finances to run a church building, the church place is not just a building to gather money. Now, 
That's not what church is about. It is a place where people should be able to come and find healing. It is a place where people should be able to come and find restoration. The church should be a place where people who are spiritually blind can come and become spiritually sight seeing. They should be able to come and receive spiritual sight. The, the church should be a place where people who are spiritually sleeping should be able to come and get a spiritually awakening yeah. in the church. That's what the church is supposed to be about. And I don't know about you, church, but I ought to make the church my place of worship. I hope that you make the church your place of worship. Amen. The church ought to make you Righteously angry when you see things not going right in the church. You ought to get righteously angry. Yes, yes. You ought to get righteously angry. Not, not talk about people, but get righteously angry that you can start finding out what is wrong so that the church, the building of the church, and the people that operate the church can operate the church like it's supposed to be ran and not like an individual wants it to be ran, but to be run in the way that the Lord wants his church, his house of prayer, to be ran. That's, that's, that's what we should be in the house for. That's what we should be in the house for. However, we are to love the Lord with all of our heart. Yes. Yes. The church is supposed to be a body of people, believers in Christ, yes. that have collectively come together in the building that we call church. Uh, yeah. Yeah. However, every now and then, individuals are in the church for the wrong reasons. As an individual, you are a church. Yes, and every now and then, Christ has to stand up in us and show us some things that are not right with us so that he can get us right and chase out the things that are in our lives that shouldn't be. Every now and then, he needs to wind some cord together and spank some stuff out of our lives. Yeah. Praise the Lord. When, when he shows us that he loves us, he is caring for us, and every and because he loves us and cares for us, every now and then Jesus has to get a little upset with us. Yes, yes. Don't get angry when Jesus gets upset with us, but ask him to help us to get our lives together. No, don't, don't get angry when he shows you where you're going wrong, but ask him to help you to stop doing wrong. Yes, yes. Don't get angry with the preacher when the preacher gives you the truth about God's word, but get angry with yourself that you don't want to accept God's word so that the Holy Spirit that liveth in you can beat out the thing that's in you that should not be there in the first place. The Bible tells us there's some things that shouldn't even be once named among you once you become the children of God. Amen. I ain't going to get into all that because I'm going to stay focused. But there's some stuff I can touch on, but I'm going to leave it alone because I need to stay focused right now where I'm at. But you know the stuff that I can talk about because you know the stuff that you're doing and you know the stuff that God tells you to leave alone. And if you don't leave alone, every now and then God got to bring something to you to shake you up to let you know that he loves you and that he cares and he wants you to get it out of your life. Be, uh, be careful when you say, Lord, whatever it is that might keep me from you, take it out of my life. If, be careful because if you really want it out of your life and you really pray for him to take it out of your life, he's going to take it out of your life and don't get upset with him when he takes it out of your life. Let him have his way. Yes, yes. When, 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 when he takes it out of life, when he shows up and when he shows you the thing that's not right with you, don't get angry with Jesus, but ask him to help you to get it out of your life. Some things he's going to do, but there's some things you're going to have to make an effort to do for yourself. Preach, right? Preach. Psalm 30 verse 5 says, For his anger endures but a moment. In his life, it, it, it says, in his favor is life. 
Yeah. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Yeah. Every now and then, God has to get indignant with us because we want to do things our own way and fall out of the righteousness of God. But in order for God to help us to become his child, we have to recognize that he lives in us and he wants us to be right, to do right, and to be a right example before a fallen world. Amen. He wants us to do right. He wants us to do the right thing. Be glad that his anger only lasts for a moment. Because, see, a moment for God, God can do some serious things in a moment. In a moment, God can, God can just speak a word in a moment. God can blink his eye in a moment. God can whisper in a moment. And the whole world in a moment could fall in a moment. So be glad that his anger only lasts but a moment. Imagine what an earthquake does in a minute. In a minute. One minute. What an earthquake does. Rick the scale, Rick the scale at seven. Shakes for only one minute. What an earthquake can do. Imagine what a hurricane can do in a minute. Imagine what a fire can do in a minute. Imagine what floodwaters can do in a minute. Yes. Be glad God's anger only lasts but a moment. But his favor is a lifetime. And I'm glad that his favor lasts a lifetime. Yes, Because when, when my life is wrapped up and tied up in his life, then it is eternal. That means I have eternal favor coming from God. Every now and then, God has to do some stuff to wake us up. Yeah. So, so I'm, I'm asking God to help us yeah. as a church. Uh -huh. help us, Lord. Yeah. To help us to be a worshiping church. Uh -huh. And not a den of thieves. Uh -huh. Not a place where people come and they're robbed of their joy and happiness. Yeah. Not a place where people come, they came looking for help, but even the very thing that they came for, them for has been stolen away from them by somebody in a pew beside. Mm -hmm. Help us to be a church where people can find what they're looking for in the Lord yes, sure. and not a den of thieves. We don't want to be stealing love from people. We don't want to be stealing joy and happiness from people. I'm not talking about them getting upset with the word, but I'm talking about individuals who have a, a, a practice of hurting people in the church because they've been hurt and hurt people like to hurt people because misery loves company. And I, I just want us to understand that God wants us to be a loving church and not a den of thieves. Not a den of thieves. Hallelujah. Help us, Lord, not to be a den of thieves. Help us to be a worshiping church. Help us, Lord, to become people that do not rob people of their joy. When, when things aren't right, Lord, we invite you in to shake us up, to turn some stuff over. Yes, we invite you in. I, I invite as the pastor of this church. When things not right, I invite you in to shake us up, to turn over some things, to put out some stuff, to beat it out if it needs to be beat out, to chase it out if it needs to be chased out. I invite you, Jesus, to come and do it in this church, Dalton Baptist Church, Great Dalton Baptist Church Incorporated. I invite you to come on in and do what needs to be done to help us to be the people that you called us to be. I invite you in. Come on in, Jesus. Come on in, Jesus. Shake us up to get right. Shake us up to wake us up. Shake us up and chase out every thief that should not be in the house of the Lord. When I'm talking about the thief, I'm talking about the demons and devils yeah. that come in on people yeah. to try to steal stuff from people. Yeah. Because John 10 and 10 tells us, and the Bible lets us know, a thief comes but to steal, kill, kill and destroy. But Jesus said that I come that you might have life and have it more abundance. Have life in abundance. Have life more abundantly. Lord, come on in. And do what needs to be done in this house. Yes, Touch every leader in this house. Start with me. And work your way on down to every member in the pew. Start with me. 
And if you need to beat something out of me, then beat it out of me. I don't care because whatever you do is going to be right with me. Whatever you do is going to be right for your people because you do all things good. You do all things right. The Bible tells us in the book of Hebrews chapter 12, verse 6, that the Lord chastens, he disciplines the ones he loves and, and he scourges, he punishes the everyone he accepts as his as a son, as a child. That's what he does. So I'm glad that whenever God brings us under conviction, Amen. it's because he loves us. Yeah. When he went into his temple and beat the stuff out of his temple, it's because he loves his place of worship. Yeah, right, right. And he had to get his place of worship right. Yeah, right. Because corruption can tear a whole place up. Let me tell you something about corruption. It is like leavened bread. It is like a little bit of leaven when you put it with dough and you let it sit. It causes the dough to rise. And a little bit of dough, a little bit of leaven and a little bit of dough can make the dough look much bigger than what it is. Don't take long. All they got to do is sit there for a while and the yeast get all in it. Next thing you know, you had a little pile of dough. Next thing you know, you got a whole swelled up piece of dough that you're going to put in the oven and then you're going to cook it and then you're going to eat it. Well, I want some unleavened bread in the house of the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want to get everything that's not right with the house out of the house so that God can do what he's supposed to do in the house. Yes, so if Jesus had to come in, look around, and make a cord, Amen. and start beating some stuff out, they come on and do it. Yes, Lord. It was right after the people had cried, Hosanna, yes. Hosanna. Right after he made his triumphal entry into Jerusalem on a donkey and a colt followed. He goes into the temple courts to worship and praise his God and he finds people cheating the people with animals and money. Imagine you got your money, you go in the temple to buy a sacrificial dove, to buy a sacrificial lamb, and your lamb got a broken leg, and, or your dove got some, some spots on it. That's not how it's supposed to be. It was supposed to be without spot or blemish. That's what God is coming for, a church without spot or blemish. And every now and then, God sees some stuff on us that shouldn't be on us. And he got to get it off of us. He got to pull some stuff off of us that should not be. Yeah. And when he pull it off, let him pull it off. So he goes into the temple. Huh? Right in the temple gates. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not in the worship part itself. Yes, yes. But he goes into the courtyard yes, mm -hmm. of the temple mm -hmm. on his donkey. Yeah, right. Steps off his donkey. All right. Sees the corruption that's going on. Well, Goes, gets some cord that had tied the animals up with, uh -huh. puts it together, yes, comes out in a fit of indignation, uh -huh. turns over some money and tables, uh -huh. takes his reed and starts beating the animals out of the temple uh -huh. and preaching to the people at the same time Preach. that it is written, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you have made it into a den of thieves. Come on in, Jesus. Amen. Whip it out. Have your, way. have your way in this house. Yes, yes. Whenever we come back together as a place of worship when we come back together as individual churches to make up the church in the church building. Yes, we ought to want to hear from the word of God. Yeah. Yeah. The written word of God. We ought to want to hear from the written word of God. We ought, we ought to want to hear from the living word of God. Yeah. And we ought to want to hear from the spoken word of God. Yeah. Whenever we come into the house again. When you come back into this house, 
you ought to come back in here worshiping and praising God that he kept you through a pandemic season. Yes, Lord. We getting ready to come back soon. Yes, Lord. Amen. Some Lord. people would ask me, Bishop, you know the governor has uh, released some of these things in the Maryland, state of Maryland. So what you think about worship? I said we're not going to come back in to the worship just yet. Amen. We're going to give it some time because this church sits in the middle of a pandemic place. Yes, we do. Zero, our zip code, 21215. Yeah. So, no, we're not, we not coming back in the worship building just yet. We're coming back. Amen. <laughs> but not just yet. Yes, Lord. And we're not coming back yet because still some things we need to see before we come back in. Yes, but when we come back in, Yes. Come back in here for this to be a house of prayer. A house of prayer. Yeah. When you come in, you ought, you ought not have nobody tell you come up to the altar. How about just coming in the church before church even start and getting at the altar and praying? How about, how about kneeling at your seat and coming on the church and praying? How, how about you don't have to wait for no 8 o'clock prayer? How about whenever you get here while music is going on in the sanctuary? Yeah. How about you just come on up here? Right. That, that's one thing what I like about the Catholic Church. That when people in the Catholic church, they have enough respect about the church building that they go in, that when they go in, they go up to the altar, they do the cross sign on that body, and then they go ahead and begin to pray. I wish that Protestant people would do the same thing. Come on in and come on up to the altar and pray. Not sit down and look around and try to find what's wrong, try to think about what's going on, try to talk about somebody looking at the deacons, what's wrong with the deacons, looking at the trustees, what's wrong with the trustees, looking at the preachers, what's wrong with the preachers. How about coming in and praying about what's wrong with you? Because you might find something wrong with everybody, but best believe there's something wrong with you too, and the Lord needs to get it out your life too. That's the indignation of Christ. And I feel a little indignant, indignant right now. Because I know that there are some people who have a desire to hurt the church of God. They have a desire to stop the church of God. But y'all to know that Christ is with me in this building. There are many people that, that a lot of times I'm carrying dead weight behind me. Because there, there's, there's some people that don't want to get with the vision. Wow. You can't say you don't know the vision. Because the vision is on the walls of this church. Wow. It's in the vestibule. It's on the walls. Yeah. You have been given a vision on paper. Mm -hmm. You have been told the vision on a numerous amount of times. But yet still some of you are stuck in the past. Stuck on some past. And you need the Christ in you to come in and get that stuff out. You so that when you come in here, you're coming here with a spirit of worship and praise on your mind. Because we got to touch the world. And we're doing that even now. Little did we know that it was going to be a pandemic season to let us know that this is when it was going to all start. God has started a great movement with this church. And when you come back here, come back here with the spirit of worship and praise. Don't come in here with trying to steal something from somebody. Don't do that. Don't come in here trying to seek rage on somebody because you're angry because God didn't do it your way. Come in here to do it God's way. That's, that's the only way I want it done. God's way. The reason I do what I do is because of the Christ that sent me. The reason I stay and do what I do is because of the Christ that sent me. And I thank God that I listen to Christ and not people. Yes. Because if I was listening to the people during this pandemic season, I would be hurt. Mm -hmm. But because I listen to Christ, yes, sir. we are still moving and being blessed by the Lord. Thank you. And I thank you, Dalton, that you're listening to the Lord. Because the lights are still on. Yeah. I thank you, Dalton, that you're listening to the Lord. Because we still got a place, a building that we call a place of worship. I thank you, Dalton, that you're listening to the Lord because we still got places to come and we still got heat. We still got air. We still got a place of worship when there are people, places of worship that are falling and losing even at this present time right now. 
Glad that God has blessed them. Glad that I still have a job. Glad that I'm, I'm not. You, you might think I was upset because I wasn't full time. No, I'm glad that I'm not full time at this time. Yeah. Even though I'm full time, I'm not full time. Yeah. Because God never takes me from the equation of it being me as the leader of the church. Amen. So I'm full time, but I have people in place to do what I can't do. Yes, Lord. I thank God that I still have a job. Yeah. Because if I had to depend on the people, I would be showing some rage. Yeah. Not indignation, but some rage. <laughs> but when I depend on the Lord, I don't have to worry about it. Yeah. I can rest yeah. in Jesus yeah. and know that everything is all right. Yeah, man. Keep your job. <laughs> Deacon said, keep your job. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Ain't going nowhere. When Christ gets angry with the church, uh -huh. Christ has, has indignation with the church because uh -huh. we belong to him. Yes, we do. He's not going to allow us to just go in a rambunctious way doing our own thing. Yes, yes. Lord. Yes, Lord. But he'll have to come into his house because this is his house. And bring it back where it needs to be. Uh -huh. Have to come into his house. And remind us that his house should be called a house of prayer. Yeah. And that it shouldn't be a den of thieves. Amen. A place where people are stealing out of your life. That's so yes, you ought to thank God that God has given you. And I'm not boasting. I'm telling you the facts. You ought to thank God that God has given you a pastor like me. Because I love you in spite of. Well, bless you. Love you back. Yes. And I don't ask you for anything. Amen. Thank but I thank God for the little that I get. Uh -huh. But I don't care if I got anything. And you know that there's times I have it. Mm -hmm. I'm here to praise and worship God and to take this church where God says it needs to go. Amen. Thank God. So thank Jesus, God. come on in here. Thank God. If you need to ride on the back of a donkey, <laughs> come on in. I started to say what the Bible calls, but y'all can't handle that right now. <laughs> the, ink, the King James Version calls it an ass. So if he got to come in here on an ass, <laughs> then ride on in. Come on in and do what needs to be done. Mm. Come on in and say what needs to be said. Yes. So that we can be and go where God will have us to be. Uh -huh. So that we can be called the house of prayer. Yes, Lord. So that when people come in here, they know that there's a difference in the house. Uh -huh. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And we're not looking at what a person is wearing. Because if, we, if someone comes in here and they're not wearing proper garments, <clears throat> we ought to have a place where we got people that know how to talk to people and minister to people. Mm -hmm. Where we can go and take them to a place where they can get something to wear. Mm -hmm. yes. So we thank you for coming to our worship service. Yes, Lord. Don't go and embarrass the person and tell them what you coming in here like that for. Mm -hmm. The yeah. same reason you came in like you were. Yes, Lord. That's why they came in that way. Getting all angry with people because they don't wear a suit. <clears throat> don't get angry with people because everybody don't have a suit. Yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. Getting all angry with people because they don't wear a dress. Everybody can't wear a dress mm -hmm. nowadays. Mm -hmm. Amen. Some people had some stuff happen to them that they can't wear dresses. All right. They feel protected wearing pants. I'm talking about women. I, that's what I'm talking about. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. And even if a man come in here in the dress, don't get upset with him. Pray for but we're going to pray for him. <laughs> everybody, don't even, everybody look at him. Act like he ain't even there. <laughs> but in your mind, pray for him. Yes, and God, God will shake him up in his spirit. Yes, he will. And he'll put on what he's supposed to have on. You're right, Bishop. Because this is a house of prayer. This is yeah. a house of prayer. And when people start coming in the house and praying, God changes things. Yes, he does. 
Devils can't stay where the prayer is. Yeah. They got to get out. Amen. The Spirit of God got to chase them out. Mm. And, 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 and sometimes people that, that have the wrong intentions, when they come here, they ain't going to be able to stay. Mm. Because prayer going to run them out. Amen. The Word of God is going to whip them. And either they're going to change to get right, or they're going to get up out of here. And I thank God that right now, it's only a total of four of us in this sanctuary right now. And we are more than six feet apart. And we're all men. Right here, in a place of worship. But I know Jesus is here. Because he said, if two or three Amen. gather in his name. He said, you can ask what you will. He said, he'll be in the midst, ask what you will, and it shall be done. If we don't want to call. Well, we got more than three. It's four of us. We in here inviting Jesus in. Amen. Come on in, Jesus. And keep coming in. I refuse to let anybody put you out. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I refuse to let anybody keep you out. Because Jesus, you are the righteous Son of God. You are the righteous. You are the wonderful counselor. You are the brighter and more the bright and morning star. You are Mary's baby. You are the lily of the valley. You are Jehovah's son. You are the Lamb of God. You are the Savior of the world. Come on in, Jesus. If you got to get angry with us, then get angry with us. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. If you got to tell us like the church is in Revelation, if you got to tell us that we did this right and we did that right, but you still have something against us, then tell us. If you got to tell us, make it right, or you'll remove us from the candlestick. Help us to make it right. So that we don't have to get removed. And I thank you, God, that it was some things that we had wrong that we got right. And so we haven't been removed from the candlestick. But whenever we go wrong, help us to get right. I'm glad you don't abandon. But you keep. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. Maybe there's somebody out there you don't know Christ as your Savior. You're watching, somebody invited you in. I want you to know, just pray with me. Lord, forgive me for all my sins. Come into my life. Save me and fill me with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. And if you've done that by faith and by the grace of Jesus Christ, you are saved. In Jesus' name, amen.